Hello everyone. This presentation is about my Goethe's Garden, written for two pianos tuned a quarter tone apart. And this is from the third movement, titled as a pentaprismic uh, caterpillar. So before I introducing uh, the details of the piece, I want to briefly play some excerpt of uh, Beethoven's uh, late piano sonata, Opus 111. Uh, it's uh, the very last piano sonata that he wrote. It's a variation uh, based on this theme. repeats and uh, it's kind of a Beethoven's late variation which has uh, this feature of a uh, very transformative processes uh, not only from this piece uh, it's also kind of a characteristics that you can find from his uh, Diabelli variations as well so if you, the piece goes to the later part of the variations kind of more fragile piece goes by uh, it's kind of a more and more and fragile it reminds me of the this Schoenberg's ideas of uh, fragmentations of a theme when the theme developed uh, so it goes to the very uh, last moment the all this kind of uh, fragile the uh, thematic materials goes a higher and higher register and kind of became uh, transformed into this very high ethereal trills, uh, like a, I don't know, a holy uh, ghost or holy spirit. So it's uh, page 19. So here. So, so I got some ideas from uh, this kind of uh, transfigurations of uh, thematic materials. There is uh, this original material which uh, is kind of uh, transfigured into other shapes, but uh, the direction of the transfigurations is uh, like evaporations of the original material, but you only uh, encapsulate the uh, the core quality of the materials and then the shape is became like a very uh, ambiguous or amorphous and then uh, it's a very in high registers uh, shimmering uh, colors of the harmonies so Goethe's garden is written between 2016 and 17 uh, is a for two pianos tuned a quarter tone apart for me to use the entire 24 quarter tone gamut and the total duration is a 35 minutes 
Uh, the piece is commissioned by 21st Century Piano Commission competition. Uh, this competition is uh, from the Uni University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Uh, it is composed from June 2016 uh, to January 2017, and it has five movements. Uh, each movement has a specific title. The first movement is uh, the Uplands, is about the, this primordial tree figure. And the second movement is a Steigerung, uh, in English, uh, intensification. And third movement is a pentaprismic caterpillar. And the fourth movement is a polaritet, uh, the polarity of uh, aborescence. And the fifth movement is a Gleisam auf einer Geistigen Leiter, uh, as on a spiritual ladder. Uh, it's uh, dedicated to the, to the two performers who premiered this piece wonderfully, uh, Hanna Choi and Han Kyun Zhu. And the premiere was uh, 2017, February 10th at the Crown Art Center. So let me read this. So Weberen wrote, uh, The Path to the New Music is the title of the book, what he wrote, uh, as following, a quote, for unity is completely ensured by the underlying series. It's always the same, only its manifestations are different. This is very akin to Goethe's conception of rules of order and the significance that's in all natural events and that can be sensed in them. His plant metamorphosis clearly shows the idea that everything must be just as in nature, since here too, nature expresses herself in the particular form, man. That's what Goethe says. End quote. End quote. Uh, that everything is the same, root, stalk, blossom. And in Goethe's view, the same holds good for the bones of the human body. Man has a series of vertebrae, each different from the others and yet similar. Primeval, bone, primeval, plant. So it's kind of an original uh, bones and original plant. Uh, and it's Goethe's idea that one could invent plants ad infinitum. And that's also the significance of our style of composition, end quote. So this is what Weberon wrote. And I was very curious about uh, Goethe's plant metamorphosis. Uh, this paragraph is from his uh, diary that he wrote in Italy when he visited the uh, Padua Botanical Gardens and he talks about the concept of the umflans here. Quote, here where I am confounded with a great variety of, of plants, my hypothesis that it might be possible to derive all plant forms from one original plant becomes clear to me and more exciting. Only when we have accepted this idea will it be possible to determine genera and species exactly. So far, this has, I believe, been done in a very arbitrary way. At this state of my botanical philosophy, I have reached an impasse and I do not see how it get out of it. The whole subject uh, seems to me to be profound and of far-reaching consequence. So later on, he talks more about the de umflant. So this is a figure of the umflant that is drawn by another scholar. So this is the formal structure of the piece and it uh, is similar to the sonata form but is largely also different. Uh, for the first movement, it's kind of an exposition that it depicts the entire shape of the piece, but also it focuses on a specific plant uh, based on this interval perfect fifths and fourths. And the second movement is kind of a rear exposition, which uh, really depicts this specific plant, which is uh, based on the interval perfect fourths and then uh, September minor third. Third movement is a completely different story. It's uh, from the overtone pentatonic material I used. Uh, so it's kind of a tonary form, you can say like that. And then fourth movement is a development of the material that was present uh, mostly uh, in the second movement. 
So I used uh, a lot of uh, higher ratios for depicting different tree shapes uh, based on the 15 over 11 or 19 over 12 or 29 over 24 or 24 over 16 so and so forth. So it, it shows uh, various different plants that came out from this kind of uh, the upland, uh, which is the primordial tree. And the fifth movement is showing the uh, overall shapes of uh, Overton tree as of a bird eye view. And then I got the idea of the fifth movement by watching the maple tree seeds falling uh, during the fall. But it also, I recently found it falling in the spring with my daughter. Another inspiration is from uh, Philip Virus' book. And then he talks about uh, his formal structure based on the, this kind of a 3D uh, shaped tree structure from the computer sciences data structure. In this tree structure, he didn't use this for his uh, harmony, but he used for his form. So this is from his interview, uh, quote, this is achieved by interpolating each of the 26 codes with the shape of the letter of the alphabet corresponding to that number and then selecting the central code of the interpolation process. Then I created a tree of codes that classifies the derived codes according to their harmonicity and inharmonicity. I think this is about his uh, piece Voss Ray. And then, uh, as you see, these, these numbers represent harmonies. Uh, so it kind of uh, shows how which harmony is connected to the another harmony. And then the another harmony is connected to the another harmony uh, based on the uh, quality of the harmony uh, in Philip Rero's uh, words, harmonicity and inharmonicity. So this is a uh, different chords are linked together in a tree type data structure, uh, so-called code tree directional map. Uh, that's what I called it. Another inspiration is from Ben Johnston's harmonic array, uh, three-dimensional array uh, lattice. So if you see here, this is how Ben Johnston created uh, his uh, harmony. And I recently uh, talked a lot with my colleague uh, Eric Jerbin. He's uh, writing his dissertation on the Catherine Lamb's piece. And uh, Catherine Lamb also uses uh, this harmonic array uh, for constructing her uh, harmony uh, constellations in her pieces. So for, for example, if you see here, this, uh, each axis represented specific ratios. For your, if you see your C as the center of the harmony, if you go to the upper axis, uh, you go to the perfect fifths above, which can be calculated by multiplying the frequency by 3 over 2. So this C and G is a 3 over 2 ratio. And then if this G to D is a 9 over 8 ratio, because of if you multiply 3 over 2 and then 3 over 2 again, you get the 9 over 4, but the 9 over 4 is an octave higher. So if you do the octave disposition, it becomes a 9 over 8. You divide by 2. And if you go further and further, you get all the uh, Pythagorean fifths uh, in that direction. And if you go to the uh, minus direction of that uh, y-axis, you get the uh, lower fifths. So C to the F to the B flat to E flat. And then uh, if you go to the, this direction, which is the z-axis, you get the uh, seventh ratio. So for example, if you would go to there, you get the seven over four overtone. And if you go to the front uh, direction, it goes to the uh, seventh undertone ratio, which is an eight over seven. And then the X axis represented the third, pure third. So it's, uh, if you go to this direction, it's uh, five over four. And if you go to the, this direction, it becomes uh, eight over five. So it's a uh, pure third above and this direction is a pure third below. So each pitch is, uh, can be generated by gradually processing this kind of uh, intervallic relationships. So to go to this pitch, you can go to this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, or you can go to this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. So all the pitches are kind of uh, interconnected with the uh, uh, frequency ratios within the array type data structure. 
So if you play these six pitches, it sounds quite nice because those are very closely uh, related uh, frequencies. So this uh, slide shows you the microtonal overtone uh, deviations. I mean, let me say again. So this slide shows you the overtone series of C, but each of these pitches are slightly out of tuned. You can say out of tuned, but it's actually more accurate just tuned because equal temperament is actually out of tuned. Uh, so each of these pitches are uh, in the overtone ratio, but as you see, most of the old partials, and especially when the prime number partial appears, you see kind of a deviations of the cent. Uh, so if you see the fifth overtone, it is uh, 14 cents lower than the actual equal tempered pitch. Seventh overtone is like a 31 cents lower from the equal temperament uh, B flat. Eleventh overtone is a very good example, which was a uh, Messiaen's uh, favorite a color tone with uh, added uh, major sixes. So it's a kind of exactly in between F and F sharp. So it's a, a quarter tone lowered F sharp. So if you see this uh, overtone series, you can actually see a harmonic series of a tree type data structure. So if you see, whenever you find the uh, odd number partials and prime number partials, it will create its own inner harmonic tree in it. So if you see the, uh, so if you see the C harmonic series, uh, it sounds nice because it's an overtone series. Actually, it has the G, which is third overtone, and then G overtone harmonic tree is in the C harmonic tree because it's a kind of a sub branch of the C overtone series. So you see this one, you can hear this one. In the C overtone series. Also, when the E overtone series appears as a fifth overtone, this overtone series in the C overtone series. Whenever this uh, prime partial appears, you will hear another overtone series of that on top of the uh, parent overtone series, which is the C overtone series. And these are the pitches that represent this uh, harmonic series, and then these numbers represent the sense deviations. So this is a uh, the very clear depiction of the overtone tree in the force movement of the piece. hear this kind of a uh, nice uh, ratios lower partials all right so another idea came from this uh, Lutoslavsky harmonic structure so he created this uh, 12 tone harmonies only based on like uh, two intervals for example this 12 tone tree uh, is based on the tritone and the minor second and this 12 tone harmony is based on the tritone and uh, perfect fifths, and so on and so forth. This was possible because if you add these two numbers together, 11, which is uh, mutually from the 12. So uh, if you add 11 and 11 and 11, you have to add 12 times to get the multiple of 12. You can get all the pitches if your summation is relatively prime with the 12. 
the beauty of this is it is a kind of a very coherent and economical for the sonority of inner intervallic structure but it creates this beautiful harmony because it is a very saturated it is uh, all 12 tones uh, another idea about the main uh, theme of the piece is uh, this fractal. Fractal system has a very distinctive feature uh, which is a self-similarity. So I will explain this in the following slide. But let me explain more about how this fractal system can be created. So to create a fractal system, you need a function and then this function uh, works as a recursive function, which means uh, it's kind of a feedback. You put the output into the input of the function and then you repeat this uh, process again and again. So if you see this uh, Inception movie, you see this uh, actor is here and then in the mirror you see the actor and then the mirror in the mirror, the actor is in the mirror in the mirror. So another actor is in the mirror in the mirror in the mirror. So for example, this is the actor and then the function is the mirror. So if you put the actor into the function, you get the first image which has the mirror and the actor. And then if you put this output into the function again, I mean the, into the mirror again, you see the actor in the mirror in the mirror. And then you put this output in the function again, you see the actor in the mirror in the mirror in the mirror. So if you repeat this operation, uh, continuously, you get a fractal dimension. So Sierpinski triangle is one example of the fractal dimension. It has a, this self-similarity feature. You have a triangle here, and then one process has a three triangles, and then in the triangles you put another triangle, and then you are getting another triangle in each of those triangles, and then so and so forth. So you keep going this and then the dimension is infinitely fragile and then it is a kind of exact replication of the root of the form. This is another example of the fractal uh, geometry which is the fractal coastline uh, of the UK. And one fascinating part of this process is because this was about the preparing the musical materials for me. I didn't show this process in the music, but it kind of created this uh, harmonies based on the practical process. The strong part of it is uh, in it, uh, the temporal element is already uh, inherent in the musical material. If you create this harmony with the specific hierarchy, which has this kind of a uh, lower frequencies created the upper partials and upper partials are creating the another upper partials so it has its uh, temporality in it because as you see in the fractal coastal line this uh, large chunk of the land came first and then as time goes by uh, it was eroded by the sea and then it became like a more and more fractal so this material itself has a uh, temporality in it so that the lowest frequencies and flow of the lowest frequency represents the most earliest time and then the uh, upper line which is created by the lowest line can uh, represent the uh, more recent uh, time and then so and so forth and then I can uh, see this as a material that I can uh, go from here to there and then here to there so there are multiple dimensions in this musical materials that I can uh, manipulate okay so uh, another way to create a fractal uh, figuration is by using this transformation operations which is a probability function and then the basic algorithm is uh, you have an initial image and then by some probability the image can be go to the uh, different domains i mean sub domains so if you see this uh, this is the the a b c d represents the transformation matrix it can be a rotation operation or magnification operation or reduction operation so if you see this original uh, square it can go to either 
a slightly rotated uh, sub square or more rotated uh, left square or uh, rotated in a different angle to the right square. So uh, by a specific probability, this dot can go to this square or this square or this square or there you cannot see exactly here but there is a line here and that represents a stem the stem of the this Bansley fawn which I adopted in my composition so the basic algorithm is using this uh, IFS system which is an iterated function system so this is a transformation matrix of the stem which I explained here and then successive smaller leaflet is uh, represented by this function which is uh, this large uh, square and then left largest left hand pinna is this one and then you see this number two thing and then largest right hand pinna is uh, uh, this square so if you put a dot there and then if you repeat that process again and again and again from the dot to the uh, left hand pinna and right hand pinna and then successive smaller leaflet and like a thousand times you will get this kind of a uh, fractal domain fractal figure which is can be presented by a fractal system and then if you really magnify a small part of this font you will get the exact same uh, figure of this large font so in Goethe's tree, I used these ideas of a transformation matrix and used that as my harmonic tree function. So you have this fundamental, which will be the fundamental of the entire uh, this plant. And then by some probability, it can go into the, this stem, which is the integer overtones of the fundamental, where it can go to the uh, successive smaller leaflet which is an octave higher domain and then it can go to the left a leaflet which is uh, just major third higher and then it will create uh, the leaflet again and again and again and then if you go to the right domain it goes to the just perfect fifth higher domain I called it as a right leaflet so this is a uh, 57th data which I used for the second movement and then uh, you see the left leaf ratio is uh, just perfect force and then right leaf ratio is a septimer minor third which is a seven over six this is the fundamental and as you repeat the operation again and again uh, the duration of the pitch uh, reduced so you hear this perfect fifth interval So another uh, material that I used for the force movement has a more higher uh, integer ratios. 
because it's a kind of a developmental form as I explained. The force movement has a, a lot of different higher ratios for creating lots of different uh, shapes of the trees, I mean shapes of the plants. So I didn't know when I devised this and playing with this, but later on I realized that I liked the most was a kind of a symmetrical interval tree which has a left leaf ratio as a 29 over 24 which is a 28 cents lowered equal tempered minor third and then right leaf ratio was a 23 over 16 which is a 28 cents raised equal tempered triton although it's a minor third and triton but uh, it's kind of uh, creating this diminished triad with a uh, slight center deviations I think I can listen to this uh, for a very long time because I really love this sound. So there are multiple effects or elements uh, that this kind of a process creates. The first one is the multiplication of scent deviations or uh, addition of scent deviation if I can say more exactly because when the frequencies are multiplied the powers are added. So frequency goes higher and higher and then more in the recursive function the deviation of sense is kind of a magnified and magnified for example like a pure major third will be like a um, 16 cents lowered from the equal temperament and if you do that operation again it will be like a 30 cents lowered from the equal temperament and then so and so forth so that's a kind of a one thing that I used as an element that I create the musical texture in the piece. So the higher partials are very kind of a much deviated from the original uh, equal temper tuning. And then there is also this hierarchy of time. As you see, the lower pitches are very close to the fundamental and then uh, the upper pitches are from the very far from the fundamental in a temporal span as well, uh, in a spatial span and then temporal span. Also, I could put a different dynamic levels for this uh, temporal hierarchy. For example, uh, lower pitches or pitches that is produced by uh, the earlier process of the function, the recursion of the function, can have a, a louder dynamic level. And then the pitches that is created by more and more nested function after lots of recursive function operation that will have a, like a pianissimo or pianissimo. So I could use these uh, lower uh, operation pitches as a skeleton of the time. So it's a first and second level fractal or the higher leaves as a more of like a 
timbre oriented harmonies or apogeatras or uh, non chordal tones like uh, dissonances. Uh, but there's uh, no dissonance here. Everything is consonant and everything is dissonance. And this is from the fifth movement. Uh, and that's it. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs>